Hello, this is John Jacob from Radio Free Readout and Amron, the American Readout Radio Operators Network. This presentation is an introduction to the predecessor to Amron called CH3, or the Channel 3 Project, which was developed in 2011 and is still an integral part of Amron today. Since the average citizen is not an amateur radio operator, we wanted to have a standardized method for the maximum amount of patriots to be able to communicate with each other. Before we proceed, there's something to keep in mind. These three different radio types cannot talk to each other. CBs can only talk to CBs. FRS radios can only talk to other FRS radios. And the same goes for MURS, MERS. The electromagnetic spectrum is divided into separate sections called bands. So at 26.985 MHz, CB channel 3 falls just inside the HF high frequency band. At 151.940 MHz, MERS channel 3 is in the VHF or very high frequency band. And the FRS, Family Radio Service Radios, fall into the UHF, or Ultra High Frequency Band, with its Channel 3 programmed at 462.6125 MHz. Each of these radios comes pre-programmed from the factory and aren't designed to be changed. The FCC, that's the Federal Communications Commission, has agreed to allow the use of these radios without a license because of the low power and limited range. Here, we're referring to these radios as they come from the factory or off the shelf. And there are multiple factors which can influence the signal and affect the performance of each of these radios. For example, the maximum power output on a CB is 4 watts, and most modern CBs come pre-programmed with 40 channels. With a magnetic mounted antenna on your vehicle, you can expect an average of 3 to 5 miles, and possibly farther in certain conditions, and terrain, weather, and other antenna configurations, which may provide you with more antenna gain. Don't be surprised if you occasionally get better performance of up to 10 or 15 miles on a CB, but don't count on that kind of performance from most standard store-bought CBs, not consistently. MURS has a maximum power limit of 2 watts, and you can expect about 2 to 5 miles performance. These come with 5 channels around the 151 and 154 megahertz range. These 5 frequencies or channels, are from the commercial VHF band and were reassigned for use with the non-licensed multi-use radio service which was created in 2000. Some businesses are grandfathered in and still use these frequencies in some places, so you may occasionally hear businesses, especially on channels 4 and 5, also known as blue dot and green dot channels. Businesses operating with a license on those channels have the right of way, but are increasingly uncommon. The family radio service is in the UHF band and designed to be used as a walkie-talkie over short distances and have 14 channels. Channels 1 through 7 are shared with GMRS. That's the General Mobile Radio Service. GMRS requires a license, but on FRS radios, which transmit at or below the legal power limit on the shared GMRS frequencies, it is legal to transmit without a license. FRS radios have excellent audio quality and reliability within their ranges but are limited to 500 milliwatts, or a half a watt. So their range is extremely limited and easily blocked by hills, buildings, or other obstacles. Also, they cannot legally be used with external antennas. Some FRS radios come in packaging with misleading claims of 15, 20, or 25 mile ranges, or more. You'll be extremely disappointed if you were hoping for more than two or three miles range from these radios right out of the package. There are a lot of Chinese-made dual-band ham radios on the market today, some of which are capable of transmitting up to 8 watts. These radios can be programmed with the FRS and MURS frequencies and are capable of transmitting way beyond the legal limit for those services. We recommend programming those frequencies into your dual-band ham radios for monitoring purposes or even transmitting in a real-world, life-threatening emergency situation if no other communications are available. 
But outside of an emergency situation, please keep in mind it is technically illegal to transmit on FRS or MERS frequencies on any communications device that is not specifically approved and labeled as such. If you want extended range, reliable communications, the use of repeaters and external antennas, we strongly recommend getting your amateur radio technician license. It's only $15 to take the examination, and the license is good for 10 years. And since Morse code is no longer a requirement, with a little bit of studying, you'll, as a licensed ham operator, be pleased at the increased communications capabilities you'll be able to legally enjoy. Using CH3, it's as simple as 3, 2, 1, 3. Turn your radio on and switch to channel 3. Most FRS and MERS radios have a feature called sub-channels, or often erroneously described as privacy channels or privacy codes. Be sure to turn these to zero or off. They provide no privacy whatsoever, and any other parties on the same channel can still hear you even though you may not be able to hear them. So, turn it to zero. Two. Attempt to transmit or listen for others transmitting for two minutes before and after the top of each hour. And one, do this every one hour at the top of the hour. That way there's a standardized channel and time for you and others to meet, increasing the chances of a meetup or call for help while preserving batteries. In an emergency situation, battery life may be a very precious commodity. If you're in a situation where you have limited battery recharging capabilities, you can save battery power by turning your radio off until the next hour rolls around. When you're talking to friends and family members on the radio within your own group, you can use any call sign or alias you'd like. In most cases, you'll likely be able to recognize the other person simply by the sound of their voice. But for linking up with others who are part of Amron, calling on them for assistance, you want to increase the chances of making contact with them. And you always want to maintain a certain level of security, which will vary depending on the situation. Don't use names, but rather use call signs or aliases. If you're an Amron member, simply use your Amron code name. If you don't have an Amron code name, then use the initials of your first and last name, phonetically. For example, if your name were David Smith, you would use Delta Sierra. When making initial contact with others outside your group, precede your call sign with the identifier Amron. So let's say you and several folks in your group are part of Amron and have your communications plan, and you all have CB radios. In this example, you are Amron member Delta Sierra 06. You know that Joe, just a few miles down the road, is Juliet 15. It would sound like this. Amron, Juliet 15. This is Delta Sierra 06. Do you copy? Joe responds, Amron, Delta Sierra 06. This is Juliet 15. Go ahead. By the way, numbers are always enunciated clearly and individually. You wouldn't say Juliet 15. It's Juliet 15. And another thing, even if you're a licensed ham radio operator, you never use your FCC call sign over non-ham bands, such as on CB, FRS, MERS, or business bands. Use a handle, an alias. Just like in the case with you contacting Joe, you can use the same method for calling any Amron operator, even if you don't know them. You would do this by searching the member directory and noting other Amron operators in your community or along your bug out route or in the vicinity of a distant location you may be traveling to. But what about making contact with others when you're unsure of whether there are any members of the network within range? In an emergency, you want to try to reach anyone you can. If you're trapped under the debris of a collapsed building after a tornado, you don't care if an Amron operator or Joe the Garbage Man or Private Snuffy from the National Guard answers your call. You just need help. If you can't raise anyone on channel 3, then switch to channel 1 with no subchannel selected. There are several organizations which have promoted channel 1 on FRS as the standardized communications emergency channel for calling out for help. And the CB channel 9 has a long-standing reputation as being the citizens band go-to channel in emergencies. And emergency and disaster personnel should be monitoring both of those during a disaster. 
But in some environments, especially when the rule of law is deteriorating, you want to do everything you can to increase the chances that whoever answers is most likely a friendly, a like-minded, self-reliant patriot. Predators are keen to calls for help from stranded and lost sheep. And some predators are aware that stranded, lost, or otherwise vulnerable citizens needing help are encouraged to turn to Channel 1 on FRS or Channel 9 on CB. That would be an extremely rare situation, but it has happened in the past, and we don't know what the future holds. So, in the spirit of staying away from the crowds, in an environment where social order is rapidly breaking down, we want you to have some options, not as a guarantee, but as a way of increasing the chances in your favor. Hence, Channel 3. Security measures, specifically ComSec, are covered in more detail in the Communications SOI, available at Amron.com. But if you want to make contact with another member of the American Redoubt Network, any member, and you're unaware of any other members in your area, you can call out in the blind. To attempt contact with any other prepper-minded patriot who may be listening, you would use the call sign X-Ray for calling an unknown party. Once again, you are Delta Sierra 06, and you're traveling home in the wake of a major regional disaster. As you're traveling through a particular county, you think you recall a couple members listed in this county in the member directory. But there's no internet to confirm it, and you don't have this county printed out. You're injured and need some assistance. But the security situation in the region has become destabilized. In this case, you would call in the following manner. Amron X-Ray, this is Delta Sierra 06. Does anyone copy? Any member of the network who is monitoring knows this is one of us when he hears Amron X-Ray. At least, the odds are very high. The responding party should replace X-Ray with his or her own Amron code name, or phonetics, in his response. Amron Delta Sierra 06, this is Romeo Bravo 52. How can I help you? There are no Amron call signs issued which begin with X-Ray, so any station responding to you claiming that he is X-Ray should be treated as suspicious. The goal of the CH3 project as it relates to Amron is to tie licensed radio operators, hams, in with non-licensed radio operators, CBs, FRS radios, and MERS radios. This benefits the whole community in two ways. First, Ham operators have access to the most information. Part of their job is to disseminate important news and developments about a disaster, including relief efforts and public safety information, to the community over CB, FRS, and MERS. Secondly, there are by far fewer hams than non-hams. The multitude of citizens with CH3 radios are a lot of eyes and ears. Not only should a CH3 station be listening, they should be reporting share information that could be helpful to others. Of course, these have limited range, and the chances are very high you may not be able to reach another station outside your own group. But we don't want to abandon having a plan at all, just because it probably won't work. Remember, this is a way of increasing the chances of making contact, and those chances increase when you're part of a growing nationwide network. So it doesn't hurt to try. If you can make contact with somebody outside your group, then great. But if not, then fine, try again later or move to a different location in your next scheduled attempt. But at least you have something which is better than no plan at all. During scheduled nets, whether it's a real-world disaster or during training nets, Amron operators know to make an attempt to put out information over CH3. Even if no one responds, they proceed with the understanding that you may be able to hear them even though they can't hear you. And they double their efforts when they see in the member directory or otherwise know that there are non-licensed CH3 members in their vicinity. Amron operators pride themselves in being ready to pass on important news and information. It's a duty they've chosen as a service to their communities. And who knows? You or someone in your group just might get the bug and advance to becoming a licensed amateur radio operator, enjoying the benefits of even greater communications capabilities. Until then, you have a plan. The CH3 Project. Connecting hams and non-hams in communities across the country. For the American Redoubt Radio Operators Network, this is John Jacob Schmidt, out. (laughs) 